is up guys welcome back this video has been a doozy to put together i'm sure you're seeing the title thinking how in the world can one person recommend to me something that is going to be good for my sensitive skin or my acne prone skin how does she know what my skin is sensitive to the short answer is i don't I'm gonna be going through all of my foundations today and talking to you guys about the things that irritate my skin, the things that I stay away from when my skin is sensitized, the things that I stay away from when I'm breaking out, but I also made you guys a spreadsheet. <laughs> it basically has a column, like yes, no, for every common red flag ingredient that people might find to be a little bit irritating or breakout comedogenic whatever. I also want to say before we jump in, we're not talking about clean or dirty or vilifying any ingredients or anything being good or bad. It is about what's good for you because sometimes it is about something being really, really all the way to the end of very skincare oriented, but for other people, it's about being all the way to the end of synthetic. And so I'm gonna talk about all of those things. And we can add more columns if you guys want to. It's very, very easy to do. So before we jump in, I do want to thank today's sponsor. You guys, I am finally working with Necessaire. So you guys know I've been through it with my body skin, and basically it comes down to the fact that I was pretty lazy about treating my body skin as good as I was treating my face skin. And that comes down to everything from fragrances, like, you know, really, really synthetic fragrances that I personally have always really loved. You know what I mean? I love a really big, loud, stinky, wonderful fragrance, but guess who doesn't? <laughs> my acne, my KP, my sensitive skin, it just, wasn't working and there was no getting around it. I needed something that was going to have face quality ingredients, active ingredients that I could use on my body skin. I was adding serums to lotions. I was just trying to find any possible way to get my skin back at some kind of equilibrium. And it had to do with taking some things out and adding other things in. So I'm going to walk you guys through the very simple body three step little set. I'm sure you guys have seen it. So two things here. One, taking out big, loud synthetic fragrances. Some people are sensitive to one kind of fragrance or another. For me, it was the big, loud <laughs> synthetic fragrances. And then also adding in brightening ingredients. I have really poor cell turnover in all my whole body, as it turns out, not just my face. And it really helps to kind of encourage that with any kind of brightening ingredients that I can. Niacinamide is a really, really effective one for me. So just starting at the beginning here, this is the body wash. This is the eucalyptus scent. I also have the unscented, but this is the one that me and my husband have been working our way through for a little while now. A little goes a long way. It's beautiful stuff. The scent is very, very light and it is just a eucalyptus natural scent. It is not, you know, anything artificial or like crazy mind blowing. And it is really gender neutral, which is really nice. Like I love the way that my husband smells when he gets out of the shower too. So it's huge for me to not have a bunch of residue on my body when I get Get done taking a shower and I had noticed that from like my conditioner and everything to be able to do one last rinse of everything off my body after I've done like all my hair care and everything makes a huge difference in whether or not my skin's going to break out and kind of like feel filmy. A lot of times when you're, I don't know, when you're shopping at like the drugstore or something and you get something really simple, it isn't really, you know, it's just unscented, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's doing super kind things for your skin. And this behaves like a luxury body wash, you know, and does all the really nice skincare things for my body, but it doesn't leave any any kind of film and it doesn't have a bunch of like, you know, crazy smells to it. Next we have this. This is the body lotion. Again, a beautifully elegant, simple package here. It's not going to offend anybody's minimalist sensibilities and she's fragrance free. That is such a big deal for me. Yes, body wash is important, but it does wash off of your skin. My skin might be able to get over it but something that stays on my skin, I was using things that were so strongly fragranced. And so switching to something fragrance-free that also has the brightening niacinamide in it was like, it was just night and day difference for me. My ingrown hairs on my legs and stuff, but also just general irritation, agitation, acne, KP, like I'm, I'm clear y'all. There is no acne, there's no KP, there's no anything anymore. And it has had a lot to do with simplifying my routine in those ways. So this has been absolutely incredible and it is a really, really nourishing lotion. And then finally, we have this 
you hear that? It's in glass. This is the deodorant. And guys, I've been seeing these commercials everywhere lately where they're really still trying to push like the old fashioned deodorants, antiperspirant deodorants. Everybody's got feelings about those ingredients, but my take is, they don't work. <laughs> Antiperspirants don't work. I knew I needed to try a different way. And mandelic acid has been such a lifesaver for me. It's an AHA, it is the active ingredient in the necessary deodorant, and it is the only thing that actually keeps me from smelling throughout the day, any day, anywhere I am. It is an amazing like bacteria killing ingredient that keeps my underarms nice and healthy too, which is great, but there's no buildup, there's no irritation, but there's also no smell and I do, I sweat. I still sweat, you know what I mean? I sweat freely. And there's just something really beautiful about all of those unified together. And this is also the eucalyptus scent. It's beautifully herbal and fresh, but it doesn't really linger. Like it's herbaceous, it's just so nice. They do have this, I believe, in an unscented as well. And I have just seen the benefits of this across the board. There is something not just so nice about knowing that the results are going to be there as I'm using these, but also this still feels special to me and I love the way that it looks on my vanity. I know that that's dumb, but like, I'm probably more likely to reach for it. <laughs> so I wanted to share that specifically in this video because we are going to be talking so much about our skin's unique needs and kind of listening to those needs. And I wanted to clue you guys in on how my philosophy has changed around my body routine and the results that I've seen from it. So I invite you guys to shop down below. I will have a link to shop the Necessaire website and you can use the code khaki10 to get 10% off of your order at Necessaire. And thank you so much to Necessaire for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now stay tuned until the end because I have shot inserts of the foundations that I arrive at, at as my favorites for you guys to, you know, see in demonstration in natural light, because I think that that's, you know, a very, very big, important part of a video like this is for you guys to see what the foundations actually look like. And also there will be the spreadsheet linked down below for you guys to kind of peruse at your leisure. So we're gonna jump into the overhead shot and I'm going to, you know, give you guys visual aids for each of the things that I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, there are so many. <laughs> So I am basically toggling over to my spreadsheet here and you guys can, you know, refer to that however you want. And the first thing that I want to eliminate from all these foundations, if I am thinking in terms of what am I going to go to, especially if my skin is broken out from acne, but when it gets sensitized to, like I'm not necessarily super sensitive to fragrance in my foundations. I just don't feel like they're ever nearly as strong as they are in like a body care item, but still that is the first thing that I rule out when my skin is mad for any reason. So the first thing we're gonna take out of here is, is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. I mean, there's just absolutely, there's absolutely no reason that I would use this anyway. It will probably be first on the chopping block to declutter, but it also happens to have a fragrance in it. So goodbye. Next. We're going to eliminate the Dior Backstage Face and Body because it has a pretty strong fragrance in it as well. Again, it doesn't typically bother me, but I'm not going to reach for this if my skin is already in a mood. Next, we can just go ahead and take everything Chanel out of the mix. Even though they do say that the number one day Chanel, the Camellia Revitalizing Foundation is supposed to be very like clean beauty oriented and everything, it's still chock full of that Chanel fragrance, y'all. So the Le Beige, Eau de Tente, the, uh, the Water Fresh Tent, the Revitalizing, and then also, this is so beautiful, this is so beautiful, but uh, the Healthy Glow Foundation, they are not in the running for my skin clearing type makeup. Next, I mean, it's really mostly going to be these luxury beauty lines, right? So Gucci is out because that's also got a pretty potent fragrance in it. Also. Danessa Meyer's Yummy Skin. This is super, super, super fragrance. Kind of smells like uh, Tutti Frutti and it's just not gonna fly. Another one that is surprisingly fragranced because you would think being, like I said, you know, we're not talking clean or dirty beauty here because Kierweiss, this liquid foundation, I think they call it the Invisible Touch Foundation, is 
also quite fragranced. And honestly, out of all of them, I know I'm a broken record, but the Kierweiss smell, <laughs> the Kierweiss fragrance is my least favorite fragrance of any of them. Now, oddly enough, even though I don't smell a fragrance in this, this is the Armani Luminous Silk. It does list parfum in its ingredients. And so I'm going to take them at their word on that. I don't doubt that there's a fragrance in here, but it has a very strong smell on its own. And the fragrance seems to kind of swoop in after the fact, if at all. So I do tend not to notice it, but she's also out. Also, oh my gosh. You know, I would never count her out for anything. And my heart is broken that Bite is closing down, you guys. That was one of the first big PR lists that I ever got on, and they've always just been so near and dear to me. They make such thought out products. They're so good. And this is like one of the best foundations I've ever used. I mean, it is fragranced, but it's very light fragrance. It's chock full of silicones, but it's like never bothered me. I don't know. It's a beautiful, beautiful foundation. Go scrape one up if you can before they go completely out of business. They're, everything's 50% off right now. It's so good. And if you guys want me to, I can do a you know, full face of my favorites from Bite or something as a recommendations video to see them off. But it just, oh, it bums me out so much, so much. Now I said that this didn't have a fragrance in it and it doesn't have one that's detectable to me, but apparently this does actually have a fragrance in it and it is the Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Cover. It apparently, let me see. Yeah, okay, it has a very, very light kind of powdery smell. So it is not that, you know, tutti fruity of the other one, but it does have a fragrance to it. So she's out. Although, you know, if you really, really need to cover a pimple, keep, keep this one out. <laughs> all right, and all the remaining ones here, at least by my deductions, by my just, you know, doing some simple formulas in Google Sheets, I guess is what it's called. I have you know, found these to not have fragrance in them. So that is still quite a lot. The next thing that I'm going to go through is actually SPF and not just chemical SPF because people can be sensitive to either one, chemical or physical. And sometimes it just helps to simplify where you can. So that takes out We've got the Well People Biotint. This is so gorgeous, but we've got a physical SPF in this. We have a physical SPF in the Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40 from Ilia here. And again, absolutely gorgeous, but in case that you are, uh, like I am, possibly sensitive to SPFs, it's just better safe than sorry. This beautiful IT Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow. I believe that this is all chemical sunscreen. Yes, it is. But you will not find octanoxate in any of my foundations that have a chemical sunscreen in them because I am specifically very, very sensitive to octanoxate. It really irritates my skin and that is just one that I've discovered on my own. So you know, not just a chemical SPF, but sometimes, or not just a mineral SPF, sometimes you have to be careful of which one might be irritating your skin. For me, it's octanoxate. And it's actually, it's surprising. Like the Bear Pro, the <laughs> Bare Minerals Bear Pro has SPF in it. It's an SPF 20 and it's titanium dioxide 3.32%, but I was talking about how this one would be a great foundation for your wedding day or something, because it's so beautifully full coverage. But then it's like, you know, somebody pointed out that it's got mineral SPF in it, which would kind of potentially cause flashback in um, flash photography, which I had forgotten that this had an SPF in it. I think a lot of theirs does. So yeah, on the same on the same note, the Complexion Rescue here from Bare Minerals, as beautiful as it is, again, your skin can react to anything. And um, I do uh, skip this one, even though it is just a mineral SPF. There is both a chemical and a mineral SPF in the Rare Beauty, this is the, oh my goodness, I forget what it's called, Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 20. So yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Like one of my favorite skin tints, but it is not one that I reach to for like, you know, irritated skin healing purposes. Same goes for the Tower 28 Sunny Days, except this one is just a mineral SPF. I am wearing this today and it is so beautifully hydrating and lovely. <laughs> doesn't bother me at all on most days. So yeah, just kind of, again, eliminating for the sake of finding the safest option. We have the Milk. This is called the Sunshine Skin Tint. And it is, again, like the Rare Beauty, both chemical and physical SPF. 
and it's in a very unfortunate container. <laughs> this, my favy fave, my favy fave fave. <laughs> There's always uh, an incentive to try and keep your skin from being irritated so you can continue to wear your favorite things. This is just the best. I love it so much, but this is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Light Revealer. This is the first one of Laura Mercier's Tinted Moisturizers, I believe, that came out and it doesn't have octanoxate in it, and so yay for that. Yay for that, but it is all chemical SPF. And the new Kosas, this revealer foundation has an SPF 20 and it is just zinc oxide 7.5%. So if you are not sensitive to a mineral sunscreen, I wouldn't worry about it at all. It's so pretty. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna get into is going to be contentious because we're talking about things that are either silicone free or not silicone free and that that's my arm. I was like, what is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> and that does tend to rub people raw in, in a lot of ways because there are so many silicones in the world, guys, and not all of them are evil. Maybe not any of them is evil, okay? This is mainly just a demonstration, not even for my own purposes, because like if it really came down to it, it you know, Mac face and body all the way, right? <laughs> well, guys, Mac face and body, I don't know what I've done with it, but I just used it the other day. It is literally probably in my orbit at this moment, but it is like completely silicones. And I just want to point out the fact that, like I said, I mean, I'm a broken record. Everybody's skin is different. And sometimes it is about going so far away from things that are really natural. Mac face and body has never, has never broken me out. It's never broken a lot of people I know who have sensitive skin out. The fact that it's not really interacting with your skin on any other level than that is might be more helpful to some people who have you know irritated or irritable skin than something that does have you know skincare ingredients or skincare claims that might actually cause more irritation than good kind of thing so i don't, I don't know where it is but it is in the spreadsheet so not to worry there but yeah we're going to talk about now the things that have silicones that end in cone. That's basically when I put in the sheet because to me it's like, you know, dimethicones and things like that. I have, I have absolutely no problem with these things, like I said, but this is just a visual demonstration. So next is the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. This has some silicones in it that I don't think are really bothersome. They just really add to the, like the wear time, but this also has like coconut ingredients and stuff in it that I'll get to in a second. So that's a reason that some people have found, you know, a lot of the like clean beauty products irritating to their skin is because clean beauty brands tend to think that coconut is kind of this neutral ground ingredient that is something that nobody's body, nobody's body is sensitive to. And a lot of people, especially, I mean, a nut allergy for one thing, um, you know, you can't do any coconut, but also plenty of people are sensitive to coconut derived ingredients and coconut oil. And so I added both of those as columns in the spreadsheet. So if you see coconut oil, that's going to be, you know, like something like this, the Kierweiss, but there are also like cocoa caprolate and uh, caprolic triglyceride and things like that that can be derived from other places but are most commonly derived from coconut, I believe. So some people are really, really sensitive to it. The Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. Now, not only would this get kind of uh, eliminated for silicones, but also because a lot of people don't like that this has alcohol in it and it can make it drying for some people's skin. It's never really bothered me, but it is listed as an ingredient. And then we have the Rose Ink Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. This is one of those, you know, funky suspension kind of formulas, uh, just like the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. So it's gonna have it just an interesting set of ingredients that kind of cause it to do that. So it's got silicones in it as well. Just to let you guys know, we're kind of departing from, we're going from things being very uh, demonstrably unique to me to just becoming kind of a demonstration, right? And that is that uh, this will eliminate the Chantecaille Future Skin. The Chantecaille Future Skin is oil-free. It's like 98% water or something like that, but it does have some dimethicone and other silicones in it. And it performs so beautifully. It's so absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful on maturing skin, it's hydrating, it's an unbelievably beautiful, people get mad at me, honestly. They're like, I tried this and now I can't put anything else on my face and it's $80 and I hate you. Like someone literally left me a comment like that. It was in jest, of course, but like, I get it. Like, I get it, it's that good. So um, this is definitely one that I personally go for when my skin is irritated. So that's how much uh, silicones don't bother me at all. Right alongside that is my equally loved Chantecaille Future Skin Cushion. 
It's so gross. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> I love this thing. So yeah, I have the replacement uh, little, you know, sachet. I need to go ahead and put the new cushion in. But again, this is another one that I would absolutely reach for on a bad skin day. It doesn't have a whole lot of coverage. The Future Skin Gel definitely has more coverage, but it's still really, really good for my skin. And Chantecaille has a lot, it boasts a lot of skincare ingredients. And so I find that maybe it's that Chantecaille's skincare ingredients outweigh the fact that there might be other things that, you know, might not be perfect for my skin. The Fenty Ease Drop. This has no fragrance to it, although some of her, oh, come on. My camera's getting confused. All right, here we have the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop. This, thank goodness, does not have a fragrance. Her body sauce does, and I th I'm not sure. I think maybe the original Pro Filter did. I'm not totally sure. No fragrance, but man, is this a silicone bomb, and that's why it's so bomb. <laughs> it actually reminds me both of the Bite Beauty, so if you're going to, you know, miss, sadly miss the Bite Beauty, this reminds me a lot of that, and also the new uh, It Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow. They're all kind of in the same satin, matte, beautiful, you know, medium coverage skin tint kind of family. Um, but yeah, this one's definitely got a lot of silicones. I still love it. So so does Lisa Eldridge. She's got quite a lot, and this is just the prettiest. It's so freaking pretty. Oh my gosh. So yeah, this is a really, really beautiful, this is the Seamless Skin Foundation, and um, it's per it's really, really high performing and long wearing and gorgeous and has silicones in it. Oh, I forgot to take this out. This is the M Cosmetics Daydream Cushion, and it has an SPF, a chemical SPF in it, as well as uh, silicone so it's a really really beautiful lightweight cushion i also think that maybe like this is not the most hygienic thing in the world <laughs> not that i clean my brushes religiously i'm no exemplar for that but like at the same time cushions have always kind of weirded me out for hygiene purposes the rare beauty liquid touch this is not my favorite foundation on planet earth but it is pretty good i like it pretty well i just have to wear something really really like hydrating and glowy underneath it but it's beautiful and also very long wearing because of the silicone's phenomenal shade range the only one that we have not eliminated yet i believe that has alcohol in it is actually the westman atelier vital skin what? This has alcohol in it? That doesn't make any sense. You can see that this is definitely not something that I have ever had a problem reaching for. So again, I'm not really sure. I think that maybe it might have something like acetyl alcohol in it. And if that's the case, no, it says isosterol alcohol, but also alcohol. So sometimes you can have something like acetyl alcohol that's a fatty alcohol, and that's going to be something that doesn't behave like an alcohol at all. It's not drying, but something to be aware of. And again, I am not a chemist. I'm not a scientist or giving any kind of dermatological advice here. I'm just going on the ingredient lists, which to be fair, that's what Hiram does. <laughs> I mean, he knows what he's talking about more than I do, but still, he's just reading ingredient lists. <laughs> okay, then we get into things like, just does it have coconut oil in it? Does it have coconut derivatives in it? Does it have aloe in it? And you guys, you can see it is slim pickings here. And you'll see one of the weirdest ones in here because these are all Clean Beauty, with the exception of two, one of the weirdest ones in here is actually the Traceless Foundation Stick from Tom Ford. So it doesn't have any silicones in it, at least not, you know, like a dimethicone or anything like that. Octal dodecanol, it might be one, I'm not sure. But it relies on, you know, other textures essentially, and it doesn't set down for that reason. It's not my most favorite, like, for performance. So I would just eliminate it based on that. But yeah, I found that to be interesting. This is actually a pretty darn straightforward formula as it pertains to potential irritants for the skin. And then I wanna talk about this little winner right here. So this is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, and it is just one of those little secret, like, simple formulas. There's something about it where, you know, you use it and you're like, this is absolutely beautiful, but of course it is, it's a NARS foundation. Guys, it is so straightforward and it is so non-irritating. There's no fragrance, there's no SPF, there's no silicones. It does have a coconut derivative in it, but we're gonna like let that slide here. <laughs> 
because most things have some kind of cocoa cap related or, or cap or triglyceride or something in them. But other than that, I mean, this is just an absolute like rock star, especially because not only is it going to give you benefits for your skin, like it's actually a skincare foundation with not, not a lot that's irritating, but also it provides coverage. So this is definitely one of my top picks for like the, you know, the safest things for my skin. But yeah, now we're into basically the ones that are pretty much like oil based. <laughs> because it's hard to make something that's like silicone free and oil free, it just is. So Saint Beauty, their entire line is going to be silicone free and that is why they're so gosh darned expensive, but this is a very beautiful foundation. I like it very much. Another phenomenal one, especially if you're going for slightly fuller coverage. All right, then we have the Typology Serum Tint. This is silicone free. It's got some healthy oils in it. It is fragrance free, no SPF, no silicones, no alcohol. It's technically not oil-free, but you know, coconut oil-free and things like that. And then um, it does have some coconut derivatives and aloe in it. The Coast is tinted oil. It's an oil, <laughs> so it's basically, that's what it is. But it's free of almost everything else. It does have some coconut derivatives in it, but uh, it's aloe-free, coconut oil-free, alcohol-free, silicone-free, and fragrance-free, and no SPF. Then we have our Cure Weiss. This is the Cream Foundation. This is a shade lightness. Yeah, it's very, very coconutty, but, um, but it works well for me for those for those days you know if i'm really really like needing something that's very very natural and doesn't have any other kind of issues to it now this is new and doesn't really it's not even like available yet this is the new luminous elixir three drop foundation from ritual defeat and it basically is just it's very very similar to like the kosas tinted oil it does have some oils in it that I find to be a little bit fragrant, maybe unnecessarily fragrant. Like I'm not sure what the claims are on something like a frankincense, but it's not frankincense. It's not the same botanical name as a frankincense essential oil. I didn't find anything in any of these that would qualify as an essential oil, but it is still kind of a fragrant oil to me. It doesn't bother my skin and it's absolutely beautiful, but it might be something, you know, to consider if you're sensitive to things that are a little bit fragrant. So now that we've established kind of what's probably in the safest territory for me, I'm going to say what my favorites are. My favorite favorites, I would say NARS, I would say Typology, and if I'm gonna drag one back up here, it's gonna be the Shantikai. <laughs> So this is about $40, a little bit under. This one's I think almost $50 and this one's about $80 and they're all an ounce, I believe, of product. And none of them has an SPF in it. And they're all very, very like simple and straightforward. This does have some, you know, silicones in it. Obviously doesn't bother me at all. The main thing that I stay away from though is something like a fragrance or a chemical sunscreen. So I will demo each one of these for you. The NARS is going to be the highest coverage out of all of these. And it really does behave the most like I would say a quote unquote foundation, you can build it quite a bit and you have an exhaustive shade. This is the best shade range out of all of them. This is just such a winner of a product and it's got this beautiful kind of radiant luminosity to it. When you put it on, it automatically feels nourishing, but it also has skincare ingredients and benefits to it. And I really feel like it's something that wears in a really unified way with your skin over the day. When you do have irritated skin and you are getting a little bit of coverage, it's going to hydrate instead of drying things out. You could say it's going to balance instead of drying things out. And that's kind of the, the service that like something like a squalane or something like that will play in these formulas. And, you know, obviously always look at the ingredient list as it pertains to the things that you are sensitive to. But for me, this is very, very balancing for my dry skin. The next in terms of coverage is the Chantikai Future Skin. And it is also like chock full of skincare ingredients, like I said. That's why it's so expensive, I think. And also, you know, the name. Chantikai is just an expensive name. They don't have like the world's greatest shape range but they do give back you know they've got their they've got their uh, philanthropic initiatives that's a big thing for Shantikai some people might have an issue with the fact that this comes in a tub uh, as far as like hygiene is concerned and things like that has not bothered me I kind of mainly work from the lid anyway come pretty close to finishing this <laughs> this will probably be the first foundation that I finish in my YouTube career <laughs> And then finally, the typology. This is a true blue skin tint. It is so, so utterly beautiful. And it does still provide coverage. It's not a barely there thing. It has enough coverage and enough of a serum consistency to it that it's it's better to me than the, like the Kosas Tinted Oil or the Ritual Defeat or any of those ones that are basically just this like super, super thin 
consistency. This does have a little bit more body to the formula itself and the way that it behaves on the skin. You would absolutely never know that this is a silicone-free tinted skincare product from a brand that predominantly does skincare. So yeah, guys, like I said, there is a spreadsheet so that you can refer to um, if this did not satisfy you and feel free to leave comments down below and let me know if there are other ingredients you want me to add. So that is it, guys. That is the video that has been daunting me for months, living rent-free in my brain, and I just hope that I did the topic justice in spite of the imperfection of me being a sample set of one. <laughs> I hope you guys will check out today's sponsor by using the link down below to shop the Necessary website and you can use my code khaki10 on site to get 10% off of your order. And I wanna thank you guys for watching today and for hanging out with me. Um, if you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.